Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today, we're going to continue our scholarly examination of the fabulous Furry Freak Brothers, who are up to number 11 now. This is another beautiful full-color issue, and uh, love this cover here. This illustrates uh, a story within, um, kind of an epic story. It's like half the issue, where the Freak Brothers buy a bus line. And uh, start a little business. This uh, such a good cover. That could be a poster. It's just so fun. Covers by uh, Shelton and Mavridis. Technically, in parentheses, it says the Freak Brothers bus line and other tales. We start off with a little inside front cover. Um, almost everything in here is a new comic for this issue. Um, unlike uh, many of the other issues, where it was uh, reprinting, uh, you know, things that were in the newspapers, the hippie newspapers. But except for that uh, epic story about the bus line, everything in here is new. And it's all by Shelton and Mavridis. So uh, this one's uh, kind of telling the tenor of the times. Once again, it's 1990 now. So we see uh, a riot breaks out. All the cops are cracking skulls on all these punk rockers. Freak Brothers just want to check it out for entertainment purposes. They're like, oh, let's follow and see what happens. And uh, one of the cops drops a bulletproof vest and Freddy grabs it and he feels all invulnerable because, you know, he's got the vest on. And he calls out to the punks. He's like, come on, counterattack. We've got him surrounded. Charge. And then we see it's like three years later. Franklin's like, hey, remember this? And he shows him the headline, cops attack concert crowd. And this is so gnarly. Like, Freddy is in a wheelchair, like he's crippled. He's blind. So he really got fucked up by those cops. And uh, Freddy says, uh, I still don't remember a thing until six months after that. So it's one of those typical Freak Brothers strips where, uh, you know, all this, something crazy happens, some huge change, and then they just forget about it the next strip. Like a sitcom, you know, it resets to, to zero. Speaking of which, uh, we just got done looking at the three-part Idiots Abroad saga. And there's no reference to all those crazy things that happened in it. All the crazy changes in the world. It's just forgotten, you know. So the first story is the Fabulous Free Freak Brothers Break Up. Man, look at this beautiful art here. It didn't. I couldn't find out who did the coloring in this. I assume it's Mavridis. But it is some lush, beautiful coloring. And I love this crowd scene. All these various people with different personalities. Uh, just great character work. It's just, everyone's looking at this variety headline. Freak clique ends streak in peak. Divorce in Rio for her suit trio. Everyone's freaking out. So we start off like a typical Freak Brother story. They're in the kitchen. And Franklin comments on how... It's amazing that we're still friends after being roommates all this time. And uh, says, yeah, we should be in the Guinness Book of World Records. But then all of a sudden, uh, they all start kind of quibbling with each other and squabbling and bickering. This is, looks so good in color. Like, you know, of course, the Freak Brothers are great in black and white, but I kind of always wish they were in color. I don't know why it makes them so much funner. It seems so much funner. So uh, Freddy and Phineas really start tearing into each other. They're just like totally squabbling. And frankly, gets sick of it. He's like, do you have to keep arguing all the time? Just shut the fuck up. And he goes into the bathroom. And he comes out like a fucking banshee. Look at him. He's like, who put the toilet paper on backwards again? <laughs> okay, hold on to your hats, people. This is one of my favorite comic panels, I think, of all time. This is so amazing. The Freak Brothers just getting this total Donnybrook. And they're beating the shit out of each other. And just look at the colors, the lettering in this. This is just freaking beautiful. And just the chaos of it. Just everything's flying. Someone's foot, it looks like, got ripped off. Or maybe it's just their shoe, but I don't know. It's crazy. Oh, that's so good. I could stay at that for a long time. So they all take off. They're all going to find their own apartment. They're sick of each other. They're finding that uh, 
getting an apartment without roommates is very hard in San Francisco. They all are unsuccessful. And uh, they all, but they all uh, see ads for this uh, computer roommate service where it'll hook you up with a perfect roommate. You know, a typical Gilbert Shelton plot twist, perfect uh, comedy device. So they all go to the computer place and they, and of course you can, you probably can tell where this is heading, right? It's like the Pina Colada song. It's, they, they arrive at the apartment and of course it's all of them. The, the computer obviously said, you guys are the perfect roommates. You should move in together. They make up and they realize that it's one of their old apartments that has been painted and fixed up. They just changed the name of the street. And because, uh, you know, the Freak Brothers have been evicted from probably every shitty apartment in San Francisco over the decades. And it ends with them, you know, a big loop. They're back at the beginning. Franklin says, hey, it's amazing we've been friends after all this time. But then Freddie starts, uh, st uh, says something kind of sniping to Phineas. So it looks like it's all going to happen all over again. Yeah, we see Fat Freddy's cat looking at the, uh, you know, us into the camera saying, here we go again. There's an interesting thing about the Times. We see a Bart Simpson poster. Simpsons was very new at the time. And I like how Paul Mavrides, uh snuck in a little picture of J.R. Bob Dobbs on this calendar. Because Paul Mavrides was a big wig in the Church of the Subgenius. He did a lot of the art for them. The next story is Save the Giant Hamsters. So Phineas comes home one day and he says... Uh, there's this Gorilla Animal Liberation League, and they're staging a night raid on the experimental hospital, and they're going to liberate the laboratory animals. So I've agreed to help out. I'm going to foster or adopt a hundred of these hamsters. And he's got cages already, little uh, wheels for the hamsters to run around. But when the guys show up with the hamsters, they're really huge. I guess they had hormonal experiments done on them or something. Once again, guys, not to sound like a broken record, but just look at this beautiful art. Gilbert Shelton did not have to draw all this detail and Mavridas, but they do. And it looks great. So uh, Phineas uh, makes this giant hamster wheel for all of them to run around in and even hooks it up so it can generate electricity. But none of the hamsters want to run on it. So he's like, uh, well, there goes that plan. Then he decides to make a recording with a tape recorder of the melancholy beauty of the cry of the hamster, <laughs> the hamster songs. And I guess he's going to sell tapes of this and uh, donate the money to the cause. Franklin and Freddie play a trick on him. They substitute the tape with a tape they made. And they say, hey, Phineas, come in here. This is so weird. When you reduce the speed on the tape, you can hear the hamsters talking. And it says, please have mercy. Do not keep us in bondage. We are sentient beings like you. And we're not even hamsters, you idiot. We're guinea pigs. <laughs> so Phineas is freaking out. He totally falls for it. And he runs into the room. He, gets a, he rents a video camera so he can videotape them talking. And Phineas and Freddy, I'm sorry, Franklin and Freddy are just cracking up in the next room. After a while, Franklin peeks in and says, did you ever get them to talk again? And uh, Phineas says, um, I decided to make guinea pig porn tapes instead. <laughs> These two guinea pigs are having sex and he's videotaping them. It's so weird. I like how though in a tiny little balloon, Phineas says, you asshole. Like, so he, know, he realizes that they tricked him eventually. But uh, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. This next story is Fat Freddy Drug Czar. And uh, I love this panel of Freddy being the head honcho. So we start off the story with uh, the Freak Brothers' longtime nemesis, Norbert Fuzdick. He's now working for the, I assume, the DEA. This is during the time of the war on drugs. And 
they're kind of satirizing it where his bosses are just like, here's $800,000, uh, whatever, do whatever you want with it. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> this war on drugs will be successful. They show in the office with all the other agents, there's just money littering the floor. Because during that time, they passed a law where um, if you were a drug dealer and the cops uh, busted you, they could seize all your assets, even if it had nothing to do with your drug business. And so basically, uh, federal agents and cops were kind of getting rich. They, they had more shit than they knew what to do with, all the stuff they confiscated. And they were just throwing money at the problem. Um, you know, it was just insane. And so this is satirizing that. I like this, we see Freddy watching TV and he's watching Cops, another uh, sign of the times. You know, totally satirizes it, showing it to be like pro-police propaganda. But I do like that they're, you know, making it seem like drugs are so evil. He's like, you slimy, scum-sucking drug user. You'll never get me, you stupid pigs. I'm high, ha ha ha. And then gunfire. But then of course, another little sat satiric thing here. He's like, oh, this has been sponsored to you by Tall Toad Breweries. Try new Trinkle Weep Light. Douche your gullet with Trinkle Weep. <laughs> I like that ad line. But then there's a thing on the news about how there's this, there, this $50 million budget for the creation of a new drug abuse agency that'll set up a network of local anti-drug squadrons. So federal officers are scouring the slums for expert advisors and witnesses. Obviously gonna pay them a lot. So Freddie has an idea. He uh, makes this sign, pretends to be an expert drug consultant, specialist in hallucinogens, stimulants, depressants, crack, and squeak. <laughs> so he just made up that last one. So Norbert shows up, doesn't recognize Freddie after all these decades. Freddie's got some cool new wave sunglasses on. And, uh, Norbert's like, what's this squeak stuff? And uh, Freddy is acting very serious. He's like, well, it's a good thing you came to me. You guys should know about this. Squeak is ravaging the slums. It's a, it's a plague. So I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna need a $100,000 budget. I'm gonna need an office building. Expenses paid. I'm gonna need a company car. And Norbert totally falls for it. Cause like I said, the government was swimming in money, all this drug money. So he sets up this office, the anti-squeak squad, basically. They put out flyers, they have rallies, anti-squeak rallies. I like how this one reporter at the rally says, are you getting good results from your drug program? And Freddie says, you haven't seen any squeak abuse around here lately, have you? <laughs> of course, because there's no squeak in the first place. So it looks like he's uh, great. Everyone is uh, lauding him as a hero. He saved the neighborhood from Squeak. So I guess uh, the government is giving him this like medal, the National Medal of Total Intolerance. But then uh, Phineas and Franklin kick in the door on this at this meeting and they say, this guy doesn't rate a, uh, any prize. He hasn't stamped out Squeak at all. We've got two giant bags of it here. So some woman says, arrest them. And they're like, you can't. Squeak is such a new drug. There hasn't been a law passed against it yet. So everyone freaks out because they're like, all they've been reading about is Squeak and what a powerful drug it is. And it's legal. So everyone stampedes them with money. Oh, give me some Squeak, please. I want to try Squeak. Even Norbert <laughs> buys some Squeak. As they're driving away in their van uh, with counting their money, uh, Freddie says, what'd you put in those capsules anyway? Uh, powdered sugar, most of them. But for Norbert's uh, pill capsule, we put an ele elephant laxative and 50,000 micro doses of LSD. And uh, six months later, we see Norbert set up camp on the toilet. I guess he's just been shitting for six months. All these boxes of toilet paper. And he's typing a letter to his local senator saying, please do not outlaw squeak. And his colors are lush. So here's the story guy that's a reprint. 
This was uh, uh, in appeared in the Thoroughly Ripped with the Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers collection, which came out in 78, and it was in color. It was a new story just for that collection. And so if you didn't have that book, you never saw it. Unless you had High Times Comics, which we looked at about five months ago. So um, I'm going to kind of not get into the nitty gritty of the story since I already made a video about it on that High Times Comics video. Um, probably the first 30 videos, if you want to see it, um, it was a while ago, it was relatively when the channel was just starting, but it's a great comic all around. So I recommend you look up that video anyway, but the whole thing appears in there. The colors do appear to be nicer. I was too lazy to go get that high times, but it seems like the printing's a little better on this. The paper's a little whiter and the colors look great. So this is also nice because we get uh, Dave Sheridan back, even though Dave Sheridan's been dead for like half a decade at this point. This was made in 78. When he was still alive, he was Shelton's assistant. So I'm assuming maybe the colors on this are by Sheridan. Um, I couldn't find a credit for it anywhere. I looked. And uh, so I, I'm not sure, though. Um, Hopefully these are the same color proofs, so it's Sheridan, or maybe they got it recolored. I don't know. It does look a little different than the other stories in this book, color-wise. So uh, the name of the story is The Fabulous Free Freak Brothers in the 2995 SF to NYC nonstop White Line Cannonball Express. And this is a great epic story. This is like half the issue. And man, they just pack in the plot in this. Look at these, all these little panels. Tons of story. Basically, you know, the Freak Brothers buy a bus, start a bus line. Almost like the, what was it, the Green Tortoise? That kind of hippie bus line. Uh, as you can imagine, lots of hijinks ensue on this cross-country trip. They go to a rock festival. Some amazing panels in here. You go through the south. And they finally make it to New York City where there's a huge riot between the Nazis and the gays and the cops. Really fun story, so I recommend you look up that video. We got a little one-pager here. Franklin gives money to Freddy and says, Hey, I'm tired of these posters on our wall. You know, go get some nice art. Go to some flea market or something. So Phineas goes with him. Of course, Freddy is just like, wants to buy black velvet cat kitty pictures and a cute little child prostitute signed by Pigal. I don't know who that is, but that was funny. And then Phineas finds what seems to be a genuine Rembrandt. And it's $300. This guy doesn't know what he's got. So they scoot her home. Freddy's sitting on the back holding the painting. Phineas is like, Hold on to that tight, Freddy. That thing could be worth, you know, half a million dollars. The painting pops out of the frame. They go crashing. Their uh, scooter gets crushed by a bus. And when they get home, I guess they took the frame and took the scooter parts and made some kind of modern art sculpture painting out of it. And Franklin likes it. He's like, hey, that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, in the we see a headline from the newspaper saying, Famous Lost Rembrandt, worth $75 million, found on top of tree by little old lady. Oh, Phineas, he just can't win. Got another one-pager here. They're, uh, the Freak Brothers are watching this TV show called Televigilante, which basically wants people to call in this 1-800 number and narc on people. And he's even saying, like, no, no matter how insignificant the crime is, report it. Um, are some of the kids uh, in your neighborhood using drugs? Do they act funny? Are they laughing? Laughing, Laughter is one of the key signs of suspicious behavior. Report them immediately. So it's this pretty horrible fascist show. And I think there was a show like this in the early 90s, late 80s. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it always had the number. And it was all like, if you know of any crime, call in. So as the guys are watching the show, Franklin sneaks into the next room and gets on the phone. We see him up here. And all of a sudden on the TV show, these cops walk in 
And they're like, you're under arrest on suspicion of arson, child molesting, and Nazi war crimes. We got an anonymous call down at Central. <laughs> and then the Freak Brothers are like, I never did like that guy anyway, or that program, or that communications medium. So a nice little satire on uh, this show specifically and just TV. Because so much of TV was just shit. And remains to be, I guess. But it's definitely improved a little with the streaming shows, I think. But yeah, early 90s, it was a wasteland out there. Fucking Urkel was on and all that crap. Inside back cover is uh, the fabulous Free Freak Brothers grow up. And we see this futuristic San Francisco. Very sci-fi. These uh, kids run into the park and they say, hey, look at those old guys. And on this park bench, we see the Freak Brothers. They're old and decrepit. And uh, Franklin says, come here, kitties. I want to tell you something. He says, every morning I get up, I eat a dozen donuts, drink a quarter of coffee with sugar and cream, and have some brandy. I smoke two packs of cigarettes per day, have all the marijuana and hash I can find. I eat hot dogs and pizza and Mexican food and drink, down it all with beer and Chianti wine. And have candy bars all day. Snort two grams of cocaine and amphetamines. And I go to sleep each night with a... I drink a bottle of scotch whiskey. And that's how I've lived to be so old. The little kids say, how old are you anyhow? 21. <laughs> Pretty good gag. I like how these uh, sci-fi kids are drawn. I assume that's a Mavridi's influence. Just these crazy... I don't know what they are, post-punk, new wavy fashions, hairstyles. They're really nuts. That's a good one. Oh, this is a nice back cover. It's like a nice pinup. And I, this is the Fabulous Free Freak Brothers, the movie. And I think around this time, late 80s, early 90s, um, the Freak Brothers was optioned by Hollywood. They were going to make a big Freak Brothers movie. Get some of that, you know, hippie nostalgia money, I guess. And I love this uh, picture of the set. We see all the Freak Brothers kind of as advisors. And uh, Gilbert Shelton and Paul Mavridis here looking over the script. This just looks so bombastic and nuts, this movie. Giant lava lamps is the special effect. Someone's riding a dinosaur. This guy's uh, dressed up as Fat Freddy's cat. He's got a suit. We just see all this crazy stuff. Million dollar production. God, I wish this was a movie. I would totally pay to see that. I like also how he says, he says, uh, how can this be a Freak Brothers movie in this era of mad dog right wingers, religious fundamentalists, militaristic loose cannons, and general intolerance? It's like the 50s now, except without the great music. It's like the 60s and 70s never happened. Come to think of it, it's the perfect time for a Freak Brothers movie. So it would have been, it would have been great. If uh, the hippie ideals had a little resurgence during that pretty crass time. So that's it, guys. The Fabulous Free Freak Brothers, number 11. And another great issue. I believe this is the last full-color issue, though. I'm kind of sad. And uh, this is, I think this might be the last all-new issue. I could be wrong. There might be some new comics in the next one. Of course, they had the great reprint in here. But like I said, if you didn't have that... Uh, press that uh trade paperback which didn't have a huge press run it's it's new to you <laughs> um i just knew about it from the high times comics so check that out check out that video if you're curious about that story it's a really fun epic story in the freak brothers fashion okay thanks for watching guys and hopefully i'll see you here next time at the hercules pedics academy of comic book studies